The best Christmas dinners in the world are the ones that put effort into every single item on the plate. I'm gonna show you three recipes that will take your very good Christmas dinner up to an exceptional Christmas dinner. I'm gonna start off by showing you my braised red cabbage and then my Christmas carrots, and then we're gonna do the ultimate roast potatoes. Oh yes, it's happening, it's Christmas, come on! This is mad flavour for how much effort you put in. Just get a large pot ready to dump lots of stuff into. Take a whole red cabbage. This little thing will literally serve about 10 people as a side dish. It's mental how far it goes and it's cheap as houses. I'm only gonna use half that's been cut through the root. Place flat side down and roughly slice up towards the root. You can discard the root or keep it. Just be aware it can be a little bitter. Dump that in the pot. Take a couple of apples, chop them up roughly, and then dump those in. Take a couple of sprigs of rosemary, and just remove the leaves from the stalk, and guess what? We're gonna dump that in there too. To make this braised red cabbage a Christmas braised red cabbage, I'm gonna go in with some Christmas spices. So that's a teaspoon of allspice, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a grate in a nutmeg. Use the whole thing. You could use pre-ground nutmeg if you don't have a fine grater like this. Look at that, it already looks like some winter scene. And then to take the edge off the bitterness, I'm gonna go in with two tablespoons of sugar. I'm using golden granulated sugar, but you could use any sugar, it will all do the job. And last but not least, chuck in a glass of decent red wine. Not cooking wine, good red wine. You wanna go for something rich and full bodied. Honestly, all this thing needs is time. It will be ready when you're ready. The longer you leave it, the better it gets. So get this on early. Smells insane already. It hasn't even started cooking. Look at that, it's just like some incredible winter scene. Lid goes on, lowest heat for hours. Second recipe, boiled carrots me off, I'll tell you that for free. Soulless, flavorless, and it's basically the best way to say, yeah, no, I hate flavor. For me, you get the best out of carrots by roasting them, or even giving them the same treatment as a cabbage, braising. And that's what I'm gonna do today. Okay, before I start, I just wanna have a little think about shapes. You can do whatever you like, but just remember that the thickness will impact how long it takes to cook. So this carrot's peeled. You could either do battens, rounds, or slanty rounds. Or what I'm gonna do with these lovely multicolored heritage carrots. I'm just gonna chuck the whole bloody thing in. Obviously that won't work if you've got a humongous carrot. Kind of similar to this, but you can just sort of cut it lengthways down the middle. And that will work perfectly. I have peeled them because I think it gives a nicer, glossier texture when they're cooked. But don't throw away the peel. You can chuck that in stocks or roast it up and you can get some nice little carrot crisps. So then almost like we've been here before, all we're gonna do is just dump stuff into a pan and leave it. The only difference is here, we're gonna turn the heat on first onto a medium heat, go in with olive oil and butter. Leave out if you're vegan, but I think it does give a nice shine to the carrots. Once it's finally going with about two or three star anise and about four whole cloves. Remember how many of those you put in, because you're gonna to wanna to remove it before you eat it, because it's not pleasant when you come across a clove when you're eating. Once that's toasted for a second, go in with a teaspoon of mustard. The juice of a couple of clementines, these are tiny, so I'm going in with about four. A load of fresh thyme. A tablespoon of golden syrup, or you could use honey and then just chuck in your carrots whole. Give them a shake about to poke. 
add a splash of water just to stop the golden syrup burning. If like mine, yours are a little bit too big, then just trim it down. Turn it down to the lowest and then plop a lid on it. Ideally you'd use one that fits, but <laughs> that's all I've got. There is less margin for error with the carrots compared to the cabbage. They can go mushy quicker. So I reckon cook them for about an hour to an hour and a half is optimal, but just keep an eye on it. All right, it's been about an hour and these carrots are done. Look at that, glossy, sticky. Amazing. Look at that sheen. Come on in. Outrageous. Outrageous. That's all I've got to say. I just nailed all of them. They're that good. <laughs> It's been about two hours and now look at this. Christmas braised cabbage. Done. Then just as a final touch before serving, scatter over some chopped nuts. I'm using walnuts. And then finally, just to tell the story a little bit, some more fresh rosemary. And that's it. There you have it. Christmas braised red cabbage. Amazing. Hold on to your reindeers because we're about to do the most important recipe in the world. Universally loved by everyone and something that everyone wants to do perfectly. I'm of course talking about the roast potato. I'm gonna share with you how I do them and I can personally guarantee you golden crispy exteriors with fluffy interiors. All you have to do is listen and follow very, very carefully. If you are not fully satisfied with your final result, then please feel free to write to me at Jago, I didn't listen and follow properly. The best roast potatoes come from overanalyzing every single step. And that begins with picking the right potato. For me, it has to be the mighty Maris Piper, the undisputed king of the spuds. Other floury potatoes would work, like King Edwards or Russets, but avoid waxy potatoes like salad potatoes or Jersey Royals or Charlottes because they just won't go fluffy and they will not go crispy. Next step, peel the potatoes fully, but keep the potato skins. I'll show you something to do with them later, which is amazing. Save for later. Once they're peeled, Take a moment to contemplate the size and the shape of the potato. This is so important as you need to achieve the best balance between a crispy exterior and a fluffy interior. Cut them too thin or small and they'll be all crisp and no fluff. Too fat or large and they'll be all potato and likely undercooked. For your average bog standard Maris Piper, I reckon, now watch carefully, the best way to cut it is down the length but through the fatter side. This way you get this big old flat side, which always goes crispy, but also enough thickness to get a fluffy interior. And then with a big one like this, there are a few things that you can do. Cut it down the middle, just as before, but I still think that is too big. So then I would almost cut these into wedges. And it might seem weird having a, sort of longer, flatter potato, but trust me, it's better. Washing cold water to rinse off excess starch. This is the nemesis of crispiness. Add fresh cold water. Heavily season with salt so that the seasoning penetrates right through to the middle of the potato. Get your biggest flame on max, put your potatoes on, 
And once it starts to boil, time 15 minutes. You want your potatoes to be cooked, but not mash. Just every now and again, poke them with a knife. There should be little to no resistance, but they should not be falling apart. That's how you get the perfect fluffy potato. All right, this is starting to boil now, so I will probably time 15 minutes from here. But just be dynamic. It might not be 15 minutes in your kitchen. Just do the knife test and you'll be all right. All right, these have had about 15 minutes boiling. We're gonna drain them and then leave them to steam. This stage is so important because what it does, it allows a lot of the excess moisture to escape in the form of steam. And excess moisture is another nemesis of crispiness. 10 minutes at least. In the meantime, get your fat in the oven to get ripping hot. I'm going to show you two examples to show you that it's not necessarily what you cook the potatoes in that makes them perfect, it's how you cook them. So in tray one, plain old vegetable oil, vegan safe. And in tray two, full on goose fat. Oh yeah. If there are two takeaways I want you to have from this video, this is the first of them. Don't skimp on your oil. <laughs> load it in to the point that you're almost shallow frying your potatoes. This is the best way to guarantee a consistent golden exterior. Trust me. If you think this is a bit of a waste just for one set of roast potatoes, forget it. You can reuse oil like four, five, six times and it actually gets better until about like the fifth or sixth time. So get this ripping hot. <sighs> Oven's at full whack. Preheat it for about 10 minutes whilst we wait for the potatoes to steam. Also important, Chuff up your potatoes a little bit. I mean, look at how fluffy these are. It's all about these craggly bits on the edge. They will go so crispy. Okay, it's been preheating for about 10 minutes and this is a really important step. I advise you to take the potatoes to the oven, not the oil to the potatoes because that is so angrily hot, okay? You can hear it, it's so hot. All right. Tray one, veg oil. Go in carefully, it will go a bit mental. And this is the key bit. You need to make sure that every single potato has been covered in the fat. So spend a bit of time doing it because they deserve it. Tray two, goose fat. When you first cook the potato, it's really important to make sure it's flat side down first. It's also really important that you do not overcrowd the tray. If you have potatoes stacked on top of each other, they'll steam rather than bake, so they'll go really soggy. So give them all space. Right, I said there'd be two takeaways from this video. I'm giving you one, this is the second one. My oven's currently at full whack, 240 degrees Celsius. When I shut it, I'm gonna turn it down to 160 and I'm gonna cook these potatoes low and slow. I've never seen a recipe that calls for that before, but from my experience, this will guarantee a crispy exterior and a fluffy interior. Just watch. So potatoes are now in the oven, 160. I'm gonna leave them for 45 minutes and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, it's been 45 minutes, let's have a look. Tray one vegetable oil and you can see that's just on one side flip them over and with these I'm gonna go in with a load of rosemary and a load of garlic back into the oven same temperature tray two goose fat turn Gonna go in with some thyme and a load of garlic. And again, back into the oven, same temperature. So I'm gonna cook those for another 30 to 45 minutes. Just keep an eye on them, but they will be so good. Okay, it's been 
about half an hour, a little bit longer, and they're ready to come out. You're gonna to wanna to see this. Vegetable oil. Oh. And the goose fat. I'm gonna drain off the oil and then we'll have a look at them properly. You don't really want them sitting around in oil, they'll go soggy. So drain it off, but keep the oil. Like I said, it has uses, and I'll show you one of them uses here. Right, oh my God. Just take a little look. really festive, delivering me the goods. Thank you, really festive. Okay, so in this one, we've got the goose fat potatoes, and then in this one, we've got the vegetable oil potatoes. Now, straight off the bat, both are just so crispy. Like, that's clear, that, that much is clear. All right, I'm going in. I'm gonna go for the vegetable oil one first. So these have had garlic and rosemary on them. I'm gonna pick a nice looking one. Right. I don't know if you could hear that. Mm. Okay, so to conclude, goose fat tastes better but you get a slightly less thick crust. The vegetable oil doesn't taste as nice, but you get a much better exterior. Also, rosemary is better than thyme. I seem to get more rosemary from that, the vegetable oil ones, than I do thyme from the goose fat ones. So, it's up to you. Do you value crunch, but less flavor, or flavor and less crunch? Both potatoes are fluffy as anything on the inside, so that's even. But I think I might go half and half. Nice one. We are well hungry and we make the best roast potatoes in the world. Which one am I gonna go back for? I think I'm gonna go for the vegetable oil. Right, nice one guys. Have a fantastic Christmas and big up. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo. Take a couple of sprigs of rosemary, just remove the leaves. <laughs> it's gonna say by pulling down. Oh, f off. You look fantastic. B man just rang. Uh, quick, 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 quick. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Rudolph. What the f is that? Come on, Rudolph. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. And it begins with the potato. Potato. <laughs> Fancy seeing you down here. Boom. Oh yeah. Come on. <laughs> oh, it just does stuff to me. It's so exciting. Rice potatoes. Whew. That's it. Thank you so much for watching, it really does mean the world to us. As ever, the full list of ingredients for this recipe will be in the box below. Don't forget to check out our Instagram for more exclusive content. Also, if you like the video, please drop us a like and consider subscribing. We post new videos every Wednesday and Sunday. Come join the Well Hungry family. Thanks again, see you later. See ya! <laughs>